And if we're not, then we're in trouble. Bill? Yes. Uh, good morning, everybody. Uh, welcome to the April meeting, uh, April meetings of uh, uh, the Dormitory Authority, as well as the April meetings of NGHP Holding Corporation and uh, Atlantic Avenue Healthcare <coughs> Property Holding Corporation. Uh, we're going to start the meeting with the governance committee of those two holding companies. Uh, and we will do that first by approving the minutes of the March 15, 2015, sorry, March 11, 2015 uh, governance meeting. Uh, just for your information, um, the governance committees are, are committees of the whole. So we are all members of the uh, governance committees of each of the holding companies. Uh, those minutes were in your, your, uh, your books uh, behind first the NGHP Holding Corporation tab. If you've had a chance to read them, uh, I, what I'd like to get is a motion to approve those minutes. Mr. President, I move the approval. Thank you very much, Sandra. Is there a second? Charlie, thank you very much for that, Seth. Um, <coughs> And now I'm going directly to the governance committee meeting. Of we talk about the uh, we're in the governance committee for NGHP. That's right. We have two review obligations that I can walk through with the, uh, with the committee members. Uh, the board book for NGHP Holding uh, Corporation contains a copy of the corporate mission statement, performance measures, and metrics, which require an annual review. Uh, staff has reviewed these documents and recommends. No changes at this time, subject to any comments. Thank you. Is there any discussion on that? We should move on unless somebody has a the question. Book also, the board book also contains uh, a copy of the corporate bylaws for NGHP Holding Corporation, um, which requires an annual review by the governance committee as well as the full board. After internal review, staff recommends an amendment uh, to section 3.4 and 5.3 of the bylaws, very similar to the amendment made to the Jasmine bylaws last month, to allow for email notification uh, to board members of committee and regular meetings as well as special meetings. I'd like to note for the record that electronic notification put be by email notification to the official email address on file in the Asden Council Office and will not include text messaging or other forms of electronic media. Subject to any comments from the Governance Committee, staff requests that the proposed amendments be recommended to the full board. The amendments, the proposed amendments are um, behind the same tab. Uh, Presumably, we've had a chance to take a look at them. Uh, are there any questions? Here, hearing none, may I have a motion, please, to approve the amendment? So thank you, Roman. Sandra, thank you for the second. All in favor, please indicate aye. 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 Motion carries unanimously. <clears throat> right. We're now going to go to the governance committee meeting. The, uh, we're going to close that governance committee meeting and open the uh, governance committee meeting for Atlantic Avenue Healthcare Property Holding Corporation. Um, the minutes of the April 11th meeting are behind that tab uh, in your books. You've had a chance to take a look at them. Uh, are there any questions about the minutes? Hearing none, may I have a motion please to approve them? Sandra, thank you. Is there a second? Beryl, thank you very much. All in favor, please indicate with aye. 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 There are no opposed. Passage unanimously. Uh, Mike's going to lead us through a discussion of the mission statement, um, uh, performance measures in the Bible. Thank you, uh, uh, Mr. Chairman. The, uh, also, before the members uh, for consideration, very similar to the to the governance committee for NGHP, is, is a copy of the corporate mission statement, performance measures, and metrics, which require an annual review. Staff has reviewed these documents and recommend subject to comments. The committee recommends no changes at this time. There are no comments. I'll move on to the bylaws. Um, and in the interest of time, uh, the, 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 before the board for consideration, uh, excuse me, before the committee for consideration, is also a copy of the uh, proposed amendments to the 
bylaws for the Atlantic Avenue Property Holding Corporation, uh, which, which does require an annual review. The same changes are recommended sections 3.4 and 5.3 of the bylaws provide for email notification to board members of committee and regular meetings as well as special meetings. There are no further comments from the committee. Our staff is uh, requesting uh, a resolution recommending approval of the proposed amendments to the bylaws to the full board. Are there any questions? Hearing none, may I have a motion please to approve the proposed amendment to bylaws? Thank you, Sandra. Thank you for the second. All in favor, please indicate the aye. 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 Yeah, none opposed. Uh, go back to the meeting itself. But we're going to adjourn the meeting of the Atlantic Avenue Committee and go to uh, the and open the DASNY uh, board meeting. Uh, where I'd like to say it to you today. Uh, we have behind tab one uh, a list of the officers proposed for election uh, to that forecast. Uh, uh, are there any questions about the list? Uh, there is none. I have a motion to receive the, the, these officers as proposed. Someone. Thank you, Charlie. Darrell, thank you for the second. All in favor, please indicate with aye. 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 There are none opposed. Behind tab two, we have the minute from the 9 March meeting of the authority. <coughs> no, that was held in Albany. I'm sorry. Uh, we've had a chance to review them. Uh, are there any questions, proposed changes, corrections? Hearing none, may I have a motion please to approve? John, thank you. John Johnson, thank you. Is there a second? Thank you very much, Sam. All in favor, please indicate aye. <coughs> aye. aye. Uh, there's none opposed, the minutes are approved. We will go to tab three, and behind tab three, uh, well, I'm sorry, <coughs> we'll have the Finance Committee Chair. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Um, the Finance Committee meeting, uh, committee met yesterday afternoon in Albany. Um, first up on the agenda was the adoption of the meeting minutes from the March, uh, meeting and after a minor adjustment, those meeting minutes were adopted. We then proceeded to address <coughs> three single approval financings, NYU, Pratt, and um, a school district revenue bond. After some discussion, we recommend that those three be approved at today's board meeting. We then advanced to discuss um, the uh, library. It was the Comac Public Library District and the Little Flower Union Free School District. Um, Bond offerings, and we uh, also, after a little, little discussion, um, uh, voted to recommend approval of those. We then advanced the two TALP financings, and we did the same. Today. And I conclude my report, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Thank you very much, Gerard. Are there any questions for Jerry? Hearing none, there is the adoption of financing documents, and the uh, President will lead that session. Good morning. Good morning, Mr. Chair. Good morning. The on tap four is the Memorial Sloan Kettering Cancer Center transaction with Matthew Bergen presenting along with Coban Council, Virginia Wong, Esquire of Nixon Eba LP, and Vivian Drohan, Esquire of Drohan Lee LLP. <coughs> Matt, Ben, Virginia, Good welcome. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Just a brief update for the members. Um, this transaction received a resolution to proceed March 9th. <clears throat> we received the PACB approval on March 16th, and the seeker analysis has been completed. Um, in addition, TD Bank has issued a commitment to directly purchase the series 2016 bonds. The bonds will be amortized over 12 years, I'm sorry, the bonds will be amortized over 20 years and the uh, bank will have a tender option or a put option after 12 years. Um, also, I want to uh, update the board. At the previous board meeting, there was some discussion regarding federal reimbursement for off-campus provider-based clinics or hospital outpatient departments. I wanted to clarify 
that the legislation does not apply to any off-campus hospital <coughs> outpatient departments that existed on November 2nd, 2015. The institution is aware of these changes and the COMAC facility, which is part of this financing, is not affected. Mr. Chairman. Thank you very much, Matt. Are there questions for Matt? Which of the two of you will present? Uh, I will present. David, um, thank you. Before you today is your adoption, uh, for your adoption, is a series resolution authorizing the issuance of up to 130 million of bonds pursuant to the authority's Memorial Sloan Kettering Cancer Center Revenue Bond Resolution, adopted February 26, 2003. The authorized bonds are to be issued to provide for cost of new capital improvements and to pay the cost associated with the issuance of the authorized bonds. MSKCC. Or Memorial Sloan Kettering has requested that the authority issue bonds pursuant to the general resolution to finance new capital improvements, including expansion of the clinic located in Comac, New York, construction of laboratory medicine building, acquisition of major medical equipment for and renovation to the Memorial Hospital for Cancer and Allied Diseases. The authorized bonds issued pursuant to the series resolution may be issued as fixed or variable uh, rate federally taxable or tax exempt bonds. <coughs> Additionally, the series resolution authorizes the authorized bonds to be offered to the public through the, either the sale to underwriters selected by competitive bidding or by ne a negotiated sale to the underwriters. Or sell directly to one or more investors in a uh, limited or private placement on terms negotiated directly with the purchasers. It is currently expected that the authorized bonds will be issued as federally tax exempt bonds in a principal amount of approximately 110 million for the purpose of financing the capital improvements. They are expected to be sold to TD Bank and A in a private placement. The center has received a commitment letter from the purchaser for the purchase of up to 110 million of authorized bonds. Pursuant to the terms of the commitment, the authorized bonds purchased by the purchaser will bear interest at a fixed rate for the 12-year period during which the purchaser has agreed to hold the bonds. Unless the center, the authority, and the purchaser agree to extend the hold period and the terms on which the purchaser will continue to hold the bonds, the authorized bonds will be subject to mandatory tender by the purchaser, at which time they may be, they may be converted to bear interest at a variable rate term rate or fixed rate and remarketed to new investors, redeemed or refunded. The series resolution delegates to various officers of the authority the power, among others, to determine with respect to the series of bonds authorized by it, first, the principal amount of bonds to be issued, second, the date or dates on which such bonds will mature, third, the rate or rates at which the bonds will bear interest or if issued as variable interest rate bonds, the manner of determining interest rate or rates, four, uh, the purchase price to be paid by, for the authorized bonds, excuse me, fifth, the redemption dates and prices, sixth, whether any of the bonds will be subject to purchase in lieu of redemption and the terms on which they may be purchased, seventh, whether any of the bonds will be book entry bonds and the depository for them, and eighth, the rights of, of and security for any bank or insurance company, if any, providing a letter of credit or a financial guarantee insurance policy to enhance the authorized bonds. The series resolution also off, uh, authorizes various officers of the authority to first prepare, execute, and deliver a preliminary and final official statement, second, execute a bond purchase agreement, third, execute an agreement to provide continuing disclosure, and fourth, execute all other documents and do all things necessary or convenient in connection with the sale and issuance of the applicable bonds. In addition, the series resolution provides that the authorized bonds issued pursuant to it may be sold either through a sale to underwriters selected by competitive bidding, a negotiated sale to underwriters, or in a direct placement to investors on terms negotiated with the investors. The loan agreement and the obligation of the center to make payments under it are general obligations of the center. The center's obligations under the loan agreement are secured by guarantees of payment by Sloan Kettering Institute for Cancer Research and SKI Realty, two not-for-profit corporations associated or affiliated with the center. However, as, as ex otherwise provided, the center's obligations under the loan agreement <coughs> will not be secured by a pledge of security by a pledge of or security interest in any assets, gross receipts, or property of the center or of either of the guarantors. 
As further inducement to the authority to issue its bonds and to make loans to the center pursuant to the loan agreement, the hospital executed an inducement agreement. In the absence of the inducement agreement, there would be no document to which the hospital is a party that will obligate it to comply with the provisions of the loan agreement that purport to bind it as an affiliate of the center. Each of the guarantors will execute a guarantee that expressly obligates each of them to comply with the obligations of the loan agreement that purport to bind them as affiliates of the center. Any authorized bonds sold through one or more publicly offered negotiated sales will be sold to a sole underwriter or a syndicate of underwriters selected by the authority prior to the sale. Each sale will be effectuated through the execution of a bond purchase agreement between the authority and the underwriters. The bond purchase agreement contains terms and conditions that are customary in connection with the sale of the authority's bonds. And finally, the authorized bonds directly sold to one or more investors through a private or limited through a private place, a limited or private placement, will be sold pursuant to one or more bond purchase agreements between the authority and the investors on terms acceptable to the center and the authority. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> are there questions uh, for Vivian? Hearing none, may I have a motion, please, to approve the transaction? Gerard, thank you very much. Is there a second? Thank you very much, Gerald. All in favor, please indicate with aye. Aye. There's none opposed. <coughs> Very unanimous. Vivian, thank you. Matt, I think you're still up. Behind thank that, you, Ralph. is the NYU Center transaction with Matthew Bergen presenting along with Bond Council Albert Simmons III of Oric Harrington and Sutcliffe LLP. <coughs> Albert, welcome. It's good to see you. The staff report provided to the members presents a 24-year bond issue in an amount not to exceed $185 million on behalf of NYU Hospital Center's obligated group. The financing that you're considering this morning will refund all or a portion of DASNY's NYU Hospital Center <coughs> Revenue Bonds Series 2006A and Series 2011A. The proposed bonds will be secured by an obligation issued under the NYUHC MTI to be secured by both a security interest in NYUHC's gross receipts and a mortgage on certain of NYUHC's core hospital facilities. This will be a public offering and the expected ratings are A3, A- and A-. Regarding the institution, um, this is an institution that has very strong revenue growth and profitability. Uh, from 2011 to 2015, net patient service revenue grew by $880 million, an increase of 50%. As far as profitability, NYUHC has recorded average operating gains of $183 million over the past five years. The operating margin over this time period has averaged 7.5%. Regarding the refunding, NYUHC proposes to use bond proceeds and existing <coughs> funds on hand to refund all or a portion of DASNY's Series 2006A and Series 2011A NYU Hospital Center revenue bonds outstanding. The refunding is proposed to be structured with level savings and the gross savings are significant. When looking at the savings analysis, there are a large amount of prior funds on hand which primarily include the existing monies in the applicable debt service funds and debt service reserve funds. These monies are subtracted from the gross present value debt service savings as these existing funds in hand will go back into the refunding transaction. Again, the savings are robust and under current market conditions, a net present value benefit of approximately $20.7 million is anticipated or approximately 11.4% of the refunded principal. Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Matt. Are there questions from Matt? <clears throat> Hearing none. Albert, please. Good morning. I'm Albert Simmons. I'm a partner in the New York office of Oric Harrington and Sutcliffe. Uh, thank you for giving me the opportunity to be here this morning. You have before you today for your consideration a resolution authorizing the NYU Hospital Center Revenue Bonds Series 2016A and a resolution authorizing NYU Hospital Center Revenue Bonds 2016B. The proceeds of the bonds are expected to be used to refund all or a portion of the outstanding uh, series 2006A bonds and the outstanding 2011A bonds and to pay the cost of issuance. Adoption of the two resolutions provides the authority and NYUHC 
the flexibility to finance the refundings in a single issuance or in two issuances. The aggregate principal amount of the 2016 bonds will not exceed $185 million. Um, they're currently outstanding approximately $393 million uh, of DASNY NYUHC uh, bonds and approximately $900 million of taxable bonds, uh, all of which are secured. And these bonds were bonds issued directly by uh, NYUHC. They did not come through uh, DASNY to issue the taxable bonds. Uh, all of them are secured by obligations um, of the obligated group under the uh, master trust indenture. The authority has lent its proceeds uh, excuse me, I should say the proceeds of its bonds uh, to NYUHC pursuant to an amended and restated uh, loan agreement. Uh, the execution of a supplemental loan agreement will be done at the time uh, of the closing of the uh, 2016 <coughs> bonds. Uh, the repayment obligations of NYUHC uh, under the loan agreement uh, in connection with the outstanding bonds and with the new bonds to be issued will be secured uh, by an obligation issued by the obligated group under the master trust indenture. Um, the resolutions um, are secured by the revenues uh, and the obligations under the master indenture and by certain funds and accounts uh, held uh, under the bond resolution. Um, the two resolutions delegate to various offices of the authority um, the ability to establish the principal <coughs> amount of the bonds, but not to exceed $185 million, the dates on which the bonds uh, will mature, uh, but not to go more than 24 years beyond uh, the July 1st, uh, first following the issuance of the bonds. Uh, the rates of interest on the bonds not to exceed 7.5%, uh, whether the bonds will be sold at a public or private sale, uh, the purchase price for the bonds uh, not to be less than 95% of the principal amount of the bonds, uh, the redemption dates and prices on the bonds uh, with the redemption prices not to exceed 102% uh, in the applicable debt service reserve requirement. In addition, the resolutions authorize the execution and delivery of a bond purchase agreement, a supplement to the loan agreement, and an agreement to provide continuing disclosure. Uh, it also um, approves the draft of the preliminary official statement. It authorizes a final official <coughs> statement and authorizes authority officers to do all things necessary uh, and advisable in connection with the issuance of the bonds. Uh, the series 2016 bonds will be special obligations of the authority uh, payable solely from revenues. Uh, the revenues consist uh, of payments made pursuant to the loan agreement uh, and the obligations. Um, these are secured uh, by mortgages uh, granted to the master trustee on NYUHC's existing core hospital facilities, a uh, security interest in certain fixtures, furnishings, and equipment, and a pledge of NYUHC's gross receipts. Um, it is expected that there will be uh, no debt service reserve requirement uh, for the 2016 bonds. Uh, currently, NYUHC is the only member uh, of the obligated group. Um, in the pledge of its gross receipts uh, includes uh, all revenue derived from the care, maintenance, and treatment of patients uh, and otherwise derived from health care and health-related services. Um, the gross receipts not only secure uh, the DASNY issued bonds, uh, but also on a parity secure all of the taxable bonds issued by uh, NYUHC directly. Uh, NYUHC um, will cause all of its Medicaid reimbursement uh, payments 
to be deposited into a Medicaid revenue account with the master trustee. The master trustee will accumulate those on a daily basis until there's enough on deposit to meet the obligations for that month, and then the balance, if any, will flow back to NYUHC. Um, the covenants that are in the existing documents uh, have not been amended. The covenants relating to uh, admission of new members to the obligated group, the exit of members from the obligated group, the incurrence of additional debt, um, that sort of thing, uh, all remain the same. Um, the bonds are expected to be sold in a negotiated sale uh, to a syndicate of underwriters, uh, which is expected to be led by J.P. Morgan uh, Securities. If you have any questions, I'll be happy to answer them. Very thorough, Albert. Thank you. Uh, questions for Albert? Hearing none, may I have a motion, please? To um, before, I just yes. wanted to remind the board that I sit on the uh, advisory board of the Hospital of Joint Diseases, which is one of the uh, components of the NYU Hospitals Center Obligated Group. Thank you very much. Yet again, I remind you. I, I don't believe disclosure. that. Yes, thank you. It's, a, it's a great disclosure. Thank you very much, Bill. May I have a motion to approve the so, Thank you, Charles. Gerard, thank you very much. All in favor, please indicate with aye. 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 <coughs> Opposed, passes unanimous. Albert, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Behind tab six is the Pratt Institute <coughs> transaction with Stephen Kozer presenting a <coughs> full bond counsel, Virginia Wong of Nixon Peabody and Vivian Drohan of Drohan. <coughs> Good morning. Good morning. The staff report presents one or more series of fixed rate bonds not to be sold in a negotiated sale at one or more times in an aggregate amount not to exceed $68 million with maturities not to exceed 31 years on behalf of the Pratt Institute. The Institute currently has $117 million outstanding in its DASNY issued series 2009C and Series 2015A bonds. <coughs> Pratt expects to use bond proceeds to advance refund the Series 2009C bonds. The refunding is expected to result in net present value savings of approximately $1.9 million, or 4.2% of the bonds being refunded. The final maturity of the refunding bonds will not exceed the final maturity of the bonds being refunded. Bond proceeds are also expected to be used to finance approximately $15 million in new money projects. Approximately $8.5 million of this will be used to add an additional two stories to an existing residence hall project currently under construction. The remaining amount of approximately $6.5 million is planned to be used to renovate and equip nine townhouses to be used as additional student housing. The Institute expects to maintain its A3 rating by Moody's with the proposed borrowing. Accordingly, the Institute qualifies for an unsecured borrowing under DASNY's recently revised security guidelines. Mortgage and gross receipts pledged by Pratt under the loan agreement for the Series 2015A bonds will remain in place until those bonds are no longer outstanding. Pratt has maintained stable undergraduate enrollment over the past five years. Its acceptance ratio in 2015 was just 44.3%, which is well below the 2014 DASNY median of 68.2% and Pratt's 2015 matriculation ratio was 25.5% ahead of the 2014 DASN median of 21.5%. While graduate enrollment has declined, Pratt's overall FTE enrollment has remained relatively stable, averaging 4,515 students over the past five years. Pratt is tuition dependent with roughly 80% of revenues derived from tuition and fees. Pratt's tuition discount rate of 24.4% is well below the 2014 DASNY median of 36%, indicating additional pricing flexibility if necessary. Pratt consistently reports operating surplus, surpluses that average approximately $8.5 million over the last five years. With the proposed bond issue, the Institute's pro forma viability ratio would be 1.1 to 1, and it has a projected debt service coverage ratio greater than 4 to 1, 
over the next five years. Mr. Chair. Steve, thank you. Questions for Steve? There being none, Virginia. Uh, before you for your consideration today is the adoption of two series resolutions authorizing the issuance of up to $68 million of bonds for Pratt Institute. The bonds will be issued pursuant to the general resolution that was previously adopted by the authority in uh, September 2008. The Institute has requested the authority to issue the authorized bonds, as Steve said, to finance the expansion of a new residential facility that's currently under construction and the renovation or equipping of existing facilities, and also to refund the uh, previously issued 2009 Pratt bonds. The adoption of the two series resolutions is requested in order to provide the authority and Pratt with the flexibility to finance all of the capital improvements and to refund the bonds either in a single series or through the issuance of two series at the same or different times. Uh, the series resolutions are identical and they authorize the bonds to be issued either as fixed rate or variable rate bonds, as federally taxable or tax exempt bonds. It's currently expected that the authorized bonds will be issued as uh, federally tax exempt fixed rate bonds. Each series resolution provides that no event may the aggregate principal amount of the authorized bonds exceed $68 million. Each series resolution delegates to the various officers of the authority the power, among others, to determine with respect to each series of bonds the principal amount of those bonds, again subject to the $68 million limitation, the date or dates on which the authorized bonds will mature, subject to a maturity limitation of 31 years, the interest rate at which the bonds may be issued, subject to a 7.5% limitation, the purchase price to be paid for the bonds, the redemption dates and prices for the bonds, whether any of the bonds will be subject to purchase in lieu of redemption, and uh, the rights and security for any bank or insurance company, if any, uh, is involved in the transaction. Each series resolution also, also authorizes the various officers of the authority to execute a loan agreement, prepare a preliminary and final official statement, execute a bond purchase agreement, and a continuing disclosure agreement, and what other, what any other documents uh, that are necessary in connection with the sale and issuance of the bonds. The general resolution, as I said, was adopted by the authority in 2008. Each series of, of bonds issued pursuant to the general resolution is separately secured by the funds and accounts that are established pursuant to the series resolution authorizing their issuance. Um, in connection with the issuance of the authorized bonds, the authority and the institute will execute a new loan agreement. As Steve said, the, the loan agreement and the obligations of the institute to make payments under it are general obligations of the institute, and they, are not, they will not be secured by a mortgage on or security interest in any property of the institute. The authorized bonds are proposed to be sold in a negotiated sale to Janie Montgomery Scott. Um, each sale will be effected through the execution of a bond purchase agreement between the authority and the underwriter. The bond purchase agreement and the continuing disclosure agreement contain the terms and, that are, uh, and conditions that are customary in connection with the sale of the authority's bonds. Does anyone have any questions? Thank you, Virginia. Please, Sandra. So no debt service reserve fund? That's correct. Yes. And the, uh, Steve, the net present value savings on the refunding was exclusive of the release of the earlier debt service reserve funds. Right. The, that takes out the uh, the prior debt service reserve fund from the, the calculation. Um, they were released, and no new one are debt service reserve funds from the past. At, at this rating <laughs> level, it seems to be the market doesn't require one. Other other questions for Virginia or for Steve? Hearing none, may I have a motion, please, to approve the transaction? Sandra, thank you. Daryl, thank you for the second. All in favor, please indicate with aye. Aye. There are none opposed. Carried unanimously. Thank you all for being here. Thank you. Behind tab seven is the school district's revenue bond financing <coughs> transaction. David Ostrander presented along with Co-Bond Council, Connie Kale, Esquire of Barclay Damon, LLP, and Gabriel Maroos, Esquire of the Maroos Law Group, PC.
Good morning. The staff report provided to the members presents multiple series of tax exempt and or taxable bonds in an amount not to exceed 500 million to be sold through multiple negotiated offerings on behalf of various New York State school districts. Proceeds from the issuance of these bonds will be used to refinance the bond anticipation notes or bans of various New York State school districts to finance the new money projects on behalf of these districts or to refund bonds issued by DASNY through the school district's revenue bond financing program. As in previous years, staff is requesting an amount not to exceed 500 million to meet current demand from school districts for a pooled financing closing in June, as well as to accommodate additional demand that could occur later in the year. The most recent school district's authorization occurred back on April 15th of 2015, when the board adopted 15 new series resolutions totaling 500 million. There will be a total of approximately 328 million of bonds issued under this 2015 approval, which includes a $200 million refunding of DASNY bonds on behalf of 30 school districts, which is currently in progress. These refunding bonds are expected to be issued in late May, leaving approximately 172 million of remaining authorization. For the June 2016 financing, we currently anticipate a pool of 25 school districts, totaling over 250 million for the purpose of refinancing bans and financing new money project of those districts. And the list of those 25 districts has been provided to the, to the members in a handout. Um, security features will be the same as previous school district pools, including semi-annual payments to be made pursuant to financing agreements backed by the full faith and credit general obligation bonds of participating school districts, a statutory intercept through the state comptroller of any state aid due to participating districts for debt service on DASNY bonds, as well as bond insurance if available and economically advantageous. Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Questions for David? Honey, you start. Thank you. Yes, I'm going to start. Um, you have before you for consideration today the adoption of 15 series resolutions authorizing the issuance of fixed rate school districts revenue bond financing program revenue bonds in an amount not to exceed $500 million pursuant to the master resolution that was adopted in 2002. As David mentioned, the bonds will be issued to finance or refinance capital projects and equipment for public school districts throughout the state and to refund certain bonds previously issued pursuant to the master resolution. As a way of background, in um, Chapter 383, which was um, adopted in 2001, authorized DASNY to provide financing to school districts for school construction projects that are eligible for building aid, approved by the commissioner, and financed after December 1 of 2001. The master resolution provides for the issuance of multiple series of bonds in an unlimited amount. Beginning in 2004, the board has adopted multiple series resolutions. Each series of bonds issued under the master resolution is separately secured from all other series. Um, most recently, in your April 15, 2015 meeting, you adopted resolutions number 50 to 64. And of those, as David mentioned, there's approximately only 172 million of remaining authorization, taking into account the refunding pool that will be um, closed in late May, early June. The new resolutions, number 65 through 74, nine are necessary in order to accommodate districts um, looking to participate in the pool closing in mid-June and thereafter and to provide for refunding of bonds previously issued. Um, as has been the past, um, DASNY expects to issue um, new bonds or bonds under the new resolutions periodically as demand warrants in order to have a consistent program that will allow school districts desiring to finance through DASNY to meet their capital needs in a timely manner. The new resolutions contain standard delega delegations to various officers of DASNY, including the power to determine the number of series, the purchase prices of bonds, the principal amount, maturity dates, interest rates, redemption dates and prices, the school district which will participate in a pool, whether to obtain a credit facility, and the series maturities and principal amounts of any bonds to be refunded. As has been the practice in the past, the master resolution does not require that the bonds be supported by credit enhancement, though municipal bond insurance has historically has been cost effective with respect to certain series of bonds, and it may um, be utilized with respect to bonds issued under these new resolutions. The new resolutions al also authorize various officers of DASNY to prepare and distribute a preliminary official statement 
prepare, execute, and deliver the final official statement to execute one or more bond purchase agreements, finance agreements, and continuing disclosure agreements, as well as any other documents that may be necessary in connection with the sale and issuance of the bonds. All of the documents will be in substantially the same form as those used in prior transactions. The bonds will be sold um, over time in negotiated sales pursuant to bond purchase agreements that, again, will be in standard form that have been used in the past. Um, good morning again. Uh, regarding the financing agreements, uh, as with prior series of school districts revenue bonds issued to finance or refinance projects for school districts, each school district will enter into a financing agreement with DASNY with the approval of the commis Commissioner of Education. The projects to be financed or refinanced with the proceeds of the DASNY bonds will be identified in each financing agreement and prior to the issuance of those bonds, each of the projects will have been approved by the Commissioner of Education. In addition, the school districts will issue their own bonds to DASNY, backed by the full faith and credit pledge of the school districts after voter approval pursuant to the local finance law. Under the financing agreements and the school district bonds issued to DASNY, the school districts are obligated to make loan repayments to DASNY in an amount sufficient to cover principal and interest on the, on the proposed series 6579 bonds when due, regardless of whether the school districts receive state aids payments. Neither the, uh, the series 6579 bonds nor the school district's obligations under the financing agreements are secured by a lien on any facilities of the school district or any other property and may not be accelerated as a remedy for default. However, the school district's obligations to make the loan repayments and pay other amounts due to DASNY under the financing agreements will be supported by the statutory intercept mechanism of the program established by Chapter 383. In addition, the school district bonds will be backed by the full faith and credit pledge of the school districts which requires them to levy taxes in, in amount sufficient <clears throat> to enable them to pay school district bonds securing their loan obligations. Now, if you have any questions, we'd be glad to respond. Thank you. Are there questions? There being none, may I have a motion, please, to approve the transaction? Thank you, Senator. Thank you. Second. All in favor, please indicate with aye. 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 Opposed the motion. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Behind tab eight is the Comac Public Library District transaction. Steve Kozer will present the credit summary and staff report. Morning again. The staff report presents 30-year tax-exempt fixed-rate bonds in an amount not to exceed $7,845,000 for Comac Public Library District, a special district library located in Suffolk County serving the residents of Comac Union Preschool District. Bond proceeds are expected to be used to renovate and reconstruct the library building. The library was added to the DASNY statute in 2008, and this will be its first bond financing. Funding for the library comes from real property tax revenues. Any changes to the tax levy are submitted to the voters for approval. Once approved by the voters, the library's tax levy is considered an annual appropriation. If the library subsequently requests an increase and the voters defeat the request, then the appropriation reverts to the amount last approved by the voters. The library's voter referendum was approved in October 2015, permitting the library to undertake the project and to pledge funds raised by taxes for amounts required under DASNY's loan agreement. The bonds are expected to be rated AA3 or greater by Moody's. Security will include a pledge of revenues and a lockbox. The lockbox requires the library to fund in advance a debt service account as tax collections are received. The town or school district, as applicable, will send all tax receipts directly to the trustee. A portion of the library's tax receipts will be set aside until the amount in the debt service fund equals the debt service coming due on the bonds, and the remaining balance will be transferred to the library. So in summary, the library's main funding source is real property taxes. The library has a predictable <coughs> revenue stream as the project has already been approved by the voters. And the debt service fund will be funded through the lockbox well ahead of bondholder payments. 
Therefore, staff recommends approval of a resolution to proceed for a bond issue in an amount not to exceed $7,845,000 on behalf of Comac Public Library District. Mr. Chair. Thanks, Steve. Uh, Questions for Steve? Hearing none, may I have a motion please to approve the transaction? Uh, Gerard, thank you. Beryl, thank you for the second. All in favor, please indicate with aye. 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 Being none opposed, the motion carries. And Steve, thank you. Behind tab nine is the <coughs> Union Fruit School District Special Act School District transaction. Matthew Bergen will present the credit summary and staff report. Thank you. Welcome the, back. The final staff report provided to the members presents a 20 year term for a bond issue in an amount not to exceed $5.195 million on behalf of. Little Flower Union Free School District, which is a special act school district located in Suffolk County. Little Flower Union Free School District was established in 1972 by a special act of the state legislature. The school originally opened as a parochial school in 1931 and later shifted to be an annex of the New York City public school system. Uh, it is now an independent public school district serving students with special educational needs. The project that you're considering this morning includes numerous repairs and renovations to the existing school building to provide adequate and appropriate instructional space. The security features will include an assignment of part one tuition and state building aid, a standby intercept of state operating aid, and leasehold interest and other real property interest required by the bank. This is anticipated to be a private placement with First Niagara Bank, and as it is a private placement, the bonds will not be rated. The Special Act School Districts were created by special action of the legislature for the purpose of providing education services to students who reside in affiliated child care agencies and or day students. In August of 1988, legislation was passed enabling DASNY to finance the renovation and construction of educational facilities for Special Act School Districts and DASNY issued its first series of bonds under this legis legislation in July of 1990. <laughs> The legislation enabling DASNY to finance special act school districts authorizes DASNY to enter into a lease agreement with Little Flower, which requires the school to, be, to pay or cause to be paid annual rentals to DASNY. The annual rentals equal the principal of and interest on the bonds, plus all fees and expenses of DASNY and the trustee in relation to the issuance of bonds on behalf of the participating district. Little Flower's obligation to pay annual rentals under its lease agreement will be secured by its assignment of building aid and part one tuition to DASNY. An account will be established for Little Flower in the school financing reserve fund, which is held by the state controller, to which building aid from the state and part one tuition from the referring school district or social service district will be paid directly. Upon certification by DASNY of the annual rentals due under the lease agreement, the controller will pay such amounts to the trustee designated by DASNY for debt service. And to conclude, the controller is also authorized to intercept state aid to local school districts and social service districts that fail to pay part one tuition. Such funds would be deposited into the school financing reserve fund. Mr. Chairman. Matt, thank you. Uh, before I ask questions, I wanted to thank you for the record to you and Steve for, for the very excellent flowchart that's uh, at the end of your presentation. It's really hope it's easy for me to understand it. It may have been helpful to others. I, I don't know. Are there questions? Yes, Andy. But you note in here that uh, the campus on which they're located, one of the risks could be whether that agency itself closed. Right. right. What's, what's the history or the financial stability there? It's a... Uh, um, an agency that we've financed for under the IAC program. Um, they've been around for quite some time. The lease is actually a 50-year lease, which comes up in 2040. So there's uh, been quite a history between the agency and the actual school. And no suggestion in terms of usage or anything that would suggest that this is at risk of not continuing? No, no, not at all. No. Thank you, Sam. Are there other questions? Hearing none, may I have a motion, please, to approve? Sam, thank you. Second? Charlie, thank you. All in favor, please indicate with aye. 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 No, there are none opposed. The motion is taken. 
Behind tab 10 is the Collider Health TELP transaction with Porsche Lee presenting. Behind tab 10 is the TELP financing for Collider Health in the amount of $15 million. Did you know it's the policy of Public Authorities Control Board that finances which exceed $10 million in the calendar year be brought before both this board and KCB for approval. Um, there is an attached equipment list which uh, identifies various IT nursing, surgery, and other equipment. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Portia. Questions for Portia? May I have a motion, please, to approve the telephone transaction? Gerard, thank you. Charlie, thank you. thank you for the second. All in favor, please indicate with aye. 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 The motion carries unanimously. Behind tab 11 is the SUNY University Hospital at Syracuse. Help transaction with Portia presented. <coughs> Behind tab 11 is the TELP transaction for SUNY University Hospital of Syracuse in the amount of $23 million. Uh, again, the policy of Public Authorities Control Board that financing which exceed $10 million in the calendar year be brought both before this board and PACB for approval. Uh, there is attached an equipment list which identifies various IT, nursing, radiology, and other equipment. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Portia. Assuming there are no questions, John? Sorry. I sit on the Council for Upstate. University Medical Hospital. Well, we got a lot of different names, but I'm there on their council. <clears throat> okay. Well, thank you for the disclosure. Uh, may I have a motion, please, to approve? So moved. Thank you, Charlie. There's a second. Sandra, thank you. All of you, please indicate with aye. 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 There are none opposed. The motion carries. Uh, next on the agenda, we have the report of the audit committee. John Gardner. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, the audit committee met uh, yesterday in Albany. Um, we had uh, two uh, very comprehensive reports, uh, one from our internal controls officer, um, uh, the other from our director of internal audit. Uh, the audit committee um, uh, reviewed the current plan for the audit, um, and um, in addition, uh, the audit committee considered a relatively minor amendment to uh, the committee's charter. Um, the charter was, or the amendment was approved for recommendation to the full board, uh, and we are recommending that the board uh, adopt the amendment today. <coughs> the board has had an opportunity to see the proposed amendment. Are there any questions about it? What is the amendment, John? Uh, the amendment is in uh, under internal control and it's item 10 on page 2 of the charter and I can show it to you if you I know I just found it. Okay. Yes. It's, I assume it's just a clarification. It is a clarification. New responsibility. That's a death that's correct. Okay. Thank you. Are there other questions? John? Hearing none, may I have a motion, please, to approve the order? Well, thank you. Is there a second? John? John Johnson, thank you very much. All in favor, please take it aye. 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 There are none opposed. Carries the Uh, we're going to move on to the management reports, uh, and the first, first of those being the report of the president. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, good morning again. <clears throat> as as you see in the written report, I have included a high-level commentary from each of our business units. In the future, we will integrate this information into my oral report. This is part of an effort to provide you with a wider array of information about DASNY. For today's purposes, you will continue to hear from each of the managing directors. Still, starting today and going forward, you will receive monthly presentations from our business leaders and members of their staff. These presentations may outline a service we provide or walk you through how a particular project comes together. Today, you will hear from Steve Kuro, our head of construction, who has a presentation on the capabilities of our construction division. 
Before we get to that, I will provide you with an update on the state budget, DASNY record financing year, and other elements of DASNY's business. First, as it relates to New York State budget update, this year's timely state budget is the sixth straight that holds spending growth to 2%. This includes raising the minimum wage to $15 an hour, enacting the most comprehensive paid family leave policy in the nation, and cutting taxes for the middle class. The governor and the legislature achieve goals that have meaningful impact on the lives of New Yorkers. As you know, the budget included a subsidiary that DASNY will help define called the New York State Design and Construction Corporation. The inclusion of the DCC in the enacted budget is a recognition by the governor and the legislature of DASNY's construction expertise. They are relying on the DCC to provide additional project management that creates efficiencies. This will help deliver on time, on budget, and of high quality components of the governor's unprecedented $100 billion investment in New York State's infrastructure. At this juncture, it is important that we all understand the DCC is very much a work in progress. We certainly have been preparing for the possibility that the DCC would in fact become a reality. Still, there is much that is determined as we move from theory to practice. We're working on the details with our partners in government. What we do know is what is in the law. I will walk you through key aspects, and Mike Cusack is ready to answer any questions you may have. The legislation establishes two purposes for the DCC, which will work with significant projects valued at more than $50 million. The first is that it will provide additional project management expertise, monitoring, and oversight of these projects undertaken by any state entity. The second is to provide means to implement and recommend improvements and other project changes on those projects early in the process to help deliver them on time, on budget, and of high quality. To achieve the DCC's goals, the law grants the DCC the authority to review, monitor, and oversee these projects. It can make recommendations for corrective action. In no way does the DCC displace the public builder in the contracting process. Instead, the legislation creates a framework that provides an unprecedented opportunity for construction professionals at all levels to have a dialogue on how to accomplish high quality projects while protecting New York taxpayers. Through this collaborative approach, the DCC works with state entities to optimize cost, schedule, and quality. By operating in this environment of collaboration, the DCC will help public builders identify hazards early in the construction process. By doing so, it streamlines project delivery. I'm excited and proud that the governor and the legislature saw in DASNY the expertise to play this important role. By helping to define the DCC, DASNY will help maximize the governor's $100 billion investment in New York's infrastructure. The DCC <coughs> benefit New Yorkers who use their tax dollars spent wisely on projects that make New York a better place to live and work. Now, the budget also includes other elements that are important to DASNY. These are significant to the role that we play in financing, and building the health care and education institutions that keep New York competitive. For example, the Transformational Economic Development Infrastructure and Revitalization Projects Act grants design build authority to Empire State Development, the New York City Convention Center, and their subsidiaries. Among them is the Empire State Complex 
where DASNY is playing a role in administering the state code. The budget extends to July 2018 DASNY's authorization to form health care subsidiaries. The subsidiary meetings this month reflect the two times DASNY has used this authority. It is critical to protecting DASNY from potential liabilities. There are also components that relate to DASNY's role in supporting the Department of Health's statewide initiative to transform health care delivery. These include $200 million for the health care facility transformation program and an expanded ability to do financing for the Office of Alcoholism and Substance Abuse Services. New tools also provided to the Office of People with Developmental Disabilities and the Office of Mental Health. These are critical for the role DASNY plays with those partners in responding quickly to financially distressed facilities. On another note, DASNY set a record year in financing for fiscal year 2016, which just ended last month. We issued almost $8.7 billion in debt on behalf of our public and private clients. That is almost $1.5 billion more than our previous record set in 2009. This is a result of putting our clients first. The record-breaking year demonstrates the important role we play in delivering low-cost financing to the health care and education institutions that anchor our communities and New York State's economy. This is the outcome of thousands of hours of hard work by the DASNY staff. It reflects the concerted effort of public finance and portfolio monitoring, council's office, finance, and environmental affairs. The record is also a product of my partnership with each of you. We are already off to a strong start this year, as you heard. In the coming weeks, we are additionally scheduled to close on as much as $770 million in financing for Columbia University, Cornell University, and Fordham University. Now, I'd also like to highlight the recognition that DASNY has received uh, DASNY was honored last month by the American Council of Engineering Companies of New York. ACEC recognized DASNY's work using alternative delivery methods encouraging RFP responses from small firms. I had the opportunity on behalf of DASNY to address more than 600 people at ACEC's March 19th event. Together, DASNY and the consultant engineers who comprise ACEC's membership have a very similar mission. We are seeking ways to reshape building across New York State. We are building university laboratories. We are fixing dams and rebuilding storm-damaged communities. We are also developing energy-efficient systems. We are, in fact, fulfilling the capital needs across the state. As the board well knows, at DASNY, we are also, we also understand it's not just what you build, but how you build it. DASNY has successfully used construction manager at risk to avoid cost overruns. We are also securing consultants and conducting in-house training to further expand our methods. We have created a program that targets project awards to architectural firms with 10 employees or fewer. About 66% of that spending has gone to minority and women-owned businesses. By targeting small firms, just as we do with MWBEs, we are living up to our obligation to expand opportunity. We are building and leading. We do this while fulfilling our obligation to the public to maximize taxpayer dollars and expand opportunities. Mr. Chair, there's, there are other elements of this, but I wanted to leave it there to see if there were any questions from the board.
What is the Empire Station tumbler? That's uh, that's the renovation of the Moynihan Station and Farley Building, as well as in the future uh, the renovation of Penn Station. So Empire Station complex, James Farley Building replacement listed here, and Penn Station. That's all one. The, 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 their their term in, you know, the, the term is the Empire Station. Yeah. Okay. On the. Um, Healthcare facility transformation program that will be administered by DOH and DASNY. What, what is the extent of DASNY's role in administering that? What, what are we doing with this new program? Well, when you want to, it's very similar to, to, the, to the role that we already have under the Kings County program for $700 million, as well as the Oneida County program for $300 million. It's, it's um, jointly administered by the president of DASNY and the commissioner of the Department of Health. Um, it, it's not a, a classical competitive uh, grant application process, but with the other programs and this program, the uh, Department of Health is, is, is considering issues of a uh, request for application. We received a notification last night that meeting will start uh, this week and next week to figure out logistics and work out the details of it, but it'll be very similar to the existing programs we have on the book. But it is not a legislative lump sum, a lot of money that uh, recommendations for projects will come from legislature, or no? The, 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 the $1.2 billion um, competitive procurement that we uh, are in the midst of, and we've made awards, ten, uh, tentative awards, now have to uh, those awardees now have to um, uh, go to con go to contract set deliverables, make sure that what they're proposing is uh, ultimately bondable. Um, that was a competitive pro procurement. Um, <clears throat> as we assessed the awardees, we uh, there was a concern that um, there may be some um, areas in the state that um, where the, 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 the where necessary improvements to health care were not achieved through that procurement process. And so a, a, a chunk of this will be um, used, I believe, to, um, to ensure that the necessary resources to fill those voids uh, occur. And that uh, would be a Department of Health assessment and the Department of Health. Health. Yep, but but yep, but uh, but the uh, I fully <clears throat> expect that we'll be in consultation with DASNY. But again, not the legislature. This is independent of that. Right? Okay. Remember, That's we've right. we've acted as a lender mm -hmm. to many of these institutions and partnered with DOH in this area. Okay. Uh, and continue. Of course. Yeah. I have various questions about the new design and construction program. Sure. I'm sure others do too. I don't know if this is the appropriate time. Should I sure. wait for council's uh, report or do it now? Why don't we? Uh, why don't we go into executive session? Uh, may I? Uh, may I have a motion to go into executive session to discuss the financial credit history of particular corporations, as well as the employment history of particular persons or matters leading to the appointment, employment, promotion, demotion, discipline, suspension, dismissal, or removal of particular persons. Uh, thank you very much, John. Jonathan? Gerard, thank you very much for the second. All in favor, please indicate with aye. 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 Uh, the motion carries. <coughs> we are now in executive session. Uh, Larry? Oh, I hate that. Oh, I hate that. That's a problem. This mic's so something. Just don't tell us to tell somebody. I think an hour should be more hopeful. Right. Okay, thank you. Uh, the record will indicate that we've just left an executive session during which uh, no, no decisions were made other than to come back to, to the public session. Um, we're still on the president's report. Um, uh, agenda item 13, uh, tab 13, behind tab 13. Uh, there are resolutions uh, for recognition of service. So, for each of you, you have a resolution on the retirement of John Pachesnik.
John started working for DASNY in September 1985. He has held positions from Director of Asset Management to Chief Financial Officer and Managing Director of Downstate Construction. We all know him well. He is an honored member of the DASNY family, and we wish him well on whatever comes next for him. It has been an honor to work with John Pachesnik. Uh, uh, he uh, brought a lot of ideas to most of the tables where I had a chance to sit. It was a pleasure to work with him. Uh, you all have had a chance to see the resolution and to go over it. Uh, are there any, any, any additions you'd like to make to it? Hearing none, may I have a motion, please, to approve it? Oh. Thank you very much. What, what? My honor to second that. Your honor to second that. <laughs> thank you. Thank you very much, Roman, for the, for the, uh, for the motion, and uh, thank you very much, uh, Sandra, for the second. All in favor, please indicate with aye. 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 Motion carries unanimously. We move to the Office of Specialized Services and Client Solutions. Priest. Thank you, Mr. Chair. DASNY welcomes Ann Andrew as Director of Information Systems. Ann has already proven to be a great access, access, asset within the IS department in the short period of time she has been with us. Ann, if you could please stand. Ann Andrews in the back. It's a pleasure to have you, Ann. Thank Welcome. You. Glad to be here. Ann and I work closely together to capture the technology improvements needed within the DASNY organization. Our goal is to execute an overall technology landscape for DASNY of coordinated, coordinated systems applications, automations, and mobile solutions to ultimately make DASNY faster, more efficient, and, more comp and most competitive. The real property and environmental affairs and sustainability departments also within uh, the Specialized Services and Client Solutions division, division are all in states of growth. The real property team is analyzing the capacity to increase assistance to the Department of Mental Hygiene divisions as they have requested us, particularly um, with regard to their property leasing and property management. The Environmental Affairs Department continues to perform within New York State with excellence. The uh, Environmental Affairs Department has the ability to perform total seeker, SHIPA, and other reviews that make sure clients are, that are obligated under New York State environmental laws for public entities are fully protected during construction according to the law. Our Environmental Affairs Department can do, what the Environmental Affairs Department can do is often much more than a typical hired independent consulting firm for the clients. The Sustainability Department is working on developing materials to outline how uh, how the use of certain sustainable products during construction will save clients money over time, more money than it possibly increases the costs up front, as well as making the client a more productive contributor to a sustainable environment. That's the end of my report. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Please, thank you very much. Are there questions for Patricia? Uh, hearing none, then we're going to move uh, to the Division of Public Finance. Thank you, Mr. Thank you. Chairman. Uh, behind tab 15 under standard public finance reports, uh, since the last board meeting, my uh, report reflects the pricing of two BOCES financings, the uh, OHM, Oneida Herkimer Madison BOCES financing, as well as the Genesee Valley financing. Uh, I would note that we also priced two transactions last week after my board report went out. That was for Columbia and Fordham. Um, on Columbia, I would just note that um, Columbia priced a subseries of bonds as green bonds uh, for one of their projects that will receive uh, LEED certification. There was significant interest by the market in those bonds, though there was no pricing differential associated with that designation. Um, oh, also, it's green bond? Yeah, yeah, sort of an environmental. <coughs> um, there, there, there's no specific definition, I would say, of green, but in the case of Columbia, what they chose to do is to issue the bonds in connection with one project in particular, which is receiving LEED certification. Oh. Um, uh, one other update in connection with the Fordham transaction, you know, one of the things that we had talked about was that Fordham um, was going to uh, have the ability to to uh, market their bonds as step coupon bonds. Um, they did so um, on the 2038 maturity. Um, there was a lot of interest from retail investors there, and the coupons stepped up from 2.25% uh, 
um, three other times uh, reaching 5.125%. Um, so again, very strong interest from retail investors. Um, brief market update. Um, municipal supply this week is approximately $7 billion. Um, muni bond funds continue to see inflows. I would say overall, you know, rates, Beryl and I were talking about this earlier, rates are extraordinarily low. Um, since the last board meeting, um, MMD has posted double-digit decreases since the last board meeting. The Treasury rates have, have been decreasing as well. Uh, there is a single approval pipeline report in the board book. As you know, uh, that includes a brief project description, expected rate, security, bond council, targeted board meeting dates. We try to give that to the board to give you a forward look as to the single uh, approval new money financings that you'll be seeing. Uh, we did consider those two financings um, earlier this morning for Pratt and NYUHC. Um, my board report also includes um, an update on financings rated in the triple V category and private placements. Um, as you know, the board had revised the guidelines back in 2009 in connection with that expanded authority. Um, I, I generally update the board annually as, as far as those financings are concerned. Um, so the, the chart's really broken up into the two categories, the triple B financings. Um, I would note, and, and we've talked about this before, that I, I think you know those, those guidelines changes that we did at the time had their intended effect as you know, for a number of the clients who have accessed the market um, who are in the triple B category, those are really institutions that would otherwise have used bond insurance or perhaps would have um, needed to access the market on a variable rate basis with you know, bonds that are backed by letters of credit in terms of what our previous guidelines um, were. Um, there are a number of private placements uh, that are on the list. As we've discussed in the past, you know, private placements, we've, the, this board has seen a number of them. We brought a number of these to you. Um, this has been a financing vehicle that has been very helpful for uh, both new clients um, as well as existing clients. Um, so uh, you've got the, the list in, in front of you. Uh, the, my board report also includes a quarterly update on financial advisor activity as well as fourth quarter bond sales summaries, which also include performance metrics. Uh, that concludes my report, Mr. Chairman. And, um, is there any questions? Are there questions for board? No one's in trouble in the triple B, the private, everything. It's good. <laughs> great, great question. Right. Hearing no questions for Portia, we're going to move to tab 16 and we will assume that the jump account and make the report to we'll be happy to have you there. That is correct. All right. Thank you. <laughs> then we'll go to tab number 17. Kim. Thank you. In, in terms of our February activity, Jasmine's reserves remained essentially unchanged for the month. ICRA reserves decreased by approximately $16.5 million, and that was primarily due to advances that were made to the Wyckoff and Brookdale hospitals. In March, we had an additional two advances. Those were to Wyckoff and Brooks Memorial hospitals, and they totaled $2.2 million. <laughs> From an operational standpoint, some of the more recent activities that have been concluded, we renewed our property casualty insurance in March, and we were able to secure a 20% reduction in premiums and lock those rates in for two years, as well as significantly reduce some of our deductibles. We also implemented the new Federal Health Care Reporting Act requirements for the both the employer side and the employee side recently. And at the current time, we are in the midst of our fiscal year-end closing process and ready to really commence the intensive audit work that will predominate May and into June before we have our closeout with you in June on that report. We're also heavily occupied with supporting the bond issuances that we've been hearing about through Porsche's reports and earlier in the meeting. Progress on our initiatives right now, we're focused on our vendor payment process. A couple of enhancements there that will save us about 10 days each year. We do our check runs every two weeks. We're also looking at different ways that we can pay the vendors. And that concludes my report, unless there are any questions. 
Are there questions for Kim? Hearing none, then we will move to tab 18. And Thanks, Al. Behind Kim? tab 18 are the... Before you start. Yes. Um, we'd ask that Steve give us uh, a report, uh, a presentation today. Um, but at due of the hour, uh, Steve has agreed graciously uh, to, to delay his report until the next meeting. <laughs> A lot of arm twisting. <laughs> <laughs> uh, behind tab 18 are the three construction division reports. Uh, the first report, photos of uh, construction projects report, photos of a seven-bed IRA that was constructed in Jamaica, Queens, $1.8 million project. Design started in March of 11 and completed in June of 11. H2M was our design consultant. Construction started in June of 14, finished this past February. J. Anthony Enterprises was our contractor, our general contractor. I have got some photos I'll pass around. Uh, design and construction uh, were challenging given, given the project's program requirements and tight site that we had to work with. The program required seven beds and handicapped accessible bedroom and bathrooms. The, resident, the residence is fully sprinklered with a fire alarm and central station uh, installed. Residence also includes an emergency generator. The contractor experienced multiple setbacks, including uh, a subcontractor universe that proved to be unreliable. They went through two building plumbers, three site plumbers, two asbestos contractors, et cetera. We also experienced issues with local authorities, including New York City DEP, where the water and sewer connection approvals took over a year. The electrical service took uh, many months to obtain from Con Ed as did the gas service from National Grid. Site utilities cost the project a large portion of the overall delay. Uh, despite the delays, OPWDD was satisfied with the end result, and end users are scheduled to move in shortly. Uh, page 7 are the construction expenditures. Fiscal year to date, $561 million, compared to prior year fiscal uh, February 15, $684 million. The delta is $123 million. Just briefly, some project updates. The ARC CCNY project. The punch list is down to about 150 items, including exterior, site, and warranty guarantee items. One final request for equitable adjustment is under negotiation. Once completed, GMP 8.3 will be closed. Day two work continues for new researchers moving into the two buildings. At Baruch, the canopy roofing material is being installed at this time. Walking pads and the fascia finish plate are the last two uh, items to be completed. We're about two to three weeks out on that project. Bernard Feinson, all trades are engaged in the finish work, operations, and installation. Now targeting June as a completion date. I visited the site last Thursday. Work is progressing. And additional manpower was added this week to push completion. On the Court Officers Training Academy, the most recent schedule has the project completing in March of 2017. Structural steel installations nearing completion. Concrete deck placements have been scheduled. Ductwork installation is ongoing, as, as is roofing and other miscellaneous tasks. Uh, DASNY, we're weighing our options with regard to the GC based on the most recent schedule analysis performed by our CM. Uh, Gozer, we continue with administrative redesign and design activities for the program. We now have 10 downstate design phase managers and four upstate design phase managers working on the 70 plus projects valued at 150 million. Uh, work at this time includes feasibility studies and design development for the, for the many projects. At NYCHA, we've begun to perform site visits with our CMs and NYCHA staff as well as our designers to start the scoping process for the 10 highest priority projects with a value of approximately $7 million. The balance of the $42 million projects dedicated to the security program are being preliminarily scoped by our CMs at this time. And the balance of the projects under the $100 million appropriation have been reviewed um, by NYCHA, and uh, we have their comments in hand. South Beach Psych Center, all bid packages have been advertised for bid, and bids have been received on two of the five packages. Bids are being analyzed at this time. Construction on the early site utility packages will begin later this spring. 
Uh, FIT, the C squared project, design development is progressing on the $148 million project with construction scheduled to begin mid-2017. And the SUNY summer projects, uh, DASNY and our contractors are geared up for the summer push. Construction will begin at numerous campuses in mid-May and will complete by mid-August. In addition, uh, currently there's seven longer-term projects that are moving forward also with a completion date of mid-August. And just a brief update on a couple of other items. Uh, MWB compliance, uh, our first payment cycle was completed uh, uh, on March 30th. Um, there were some lessons learned along the way. The second check run is being processed this, this week, and uh, we've done better with regards to compliance. Uh, we're making some adjustments based on those lessons learned. Uh, however, the overall, overall, however, the payment cycle, these two payment cycles were considered successful. We'll continue to meet internally to advance a balance of the phase one uh, MWB compliance initiatives, and we're looking ahead to phase two and three activities. Uh, just on the personnel update, we continue to aggressively recruit for many positions in the construction division, including assistant project managers, project managers, chief project managers, contract administrators, field reps, and others. Uh, as stated in previous meeting, markets hot in New York City complicating our recruit recruitment efforts. However, we remain in the market, looking to backfill positions left vacant by recent retirements and resignations, and look to add expertise in areas new to DAS. And OPG insurance and training functions that were relocated to the construction division are continue to be integrated into the division. We've begun to implement uh, current construction division practices with the staff and look to better integrate these functions into our daily practices. That concludes my report, unless there's any questions. Are there questions? Thank you, Steve. Any questions for Steve? Hearing none, may I have a motion, please, to adjourn this meeting? <laughs> Charlie, thank you. Gerard, thank you very much for the second. Uh, all in favor, please indicate aye. 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 This meeting's still adjourned. We will now open uh, the, the annual meeting of the uh, NGHP Holding Corporation. Covenants, thank you. The, the uh, first order of business is the election of officers. Uh, there is a resolution uh, that would purport to do that. Uh, it is on the table in front of you. Uh, four people are being elected to, to uh, as assistant treasurer and uh, as assistant secretaries. Uh, you've had a chance to take a look at that. Are there any questions about it? None. May I have a motion, please, to approve, approve the resolution? Second. Thank you, Sam. Jonathan, thank you very much for the session. All in favor, please indicate with aye. 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 Uh, <coughs> carries unanimously. Uh, you, you have the minutes of our last meeting in front of you, but um, uh, Mike Cusack wants to uh, we, have, we have to make one change, up. one change to the minutes in the nature of a correction. The date of March 31st should actually be March 30th, and we'll be made at the final version. Thank you, Mr. Have you all had a chance to see the minutes? Mm -hmm. uh, are there any other corrections? Hearing none, may I have a motion, please, to approve the minutes with Mike's correction? Darrell, thank you. Is there a second? Thank you very much. All in favor? Aye. Uh, minutes uh, are approved. The third uh, agenda item, uh, there's a limit to the bylaws uh, of NGHP, and Mike's going to tell us what that means. Um, the minutes of uh, this meeting will reflect our earlier discussion that the, uh, uh, that the mission statement of performance measures and metrics were reviewed by the recommended board. That leaves one, uh, one annual review obligation for us, the subsidiary uh, bylaws with the two recommended changes. Uh, staff with the government, government's committee agrees uh, to recommend board for approval, the changes uh, to amend section 3.4 and 5.3 of the NGHP bylaws to allow for email notification to board members on the terms discussed previously. Uh, staff, uh, staff and the government again both recommend the recommendation of those changes. Thank you. Thanks very much. Are there questions for Mike? Hearing none, may I have a motion please to approve? Thank you, sir. Is there a second? Jonathan, thank you very much. All in favor, please indicate with aye. 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 aye.
motion carries. The bylaw amendment is accepted. And the last agenda item is the president's report. Mr. Thank you. At least once each year, we hold a meeting of the board of each of DASNY's subsidiaries and review the activities undertaken by each of them since their last annual meeting. This meeting is the annual meeting of NGHP Holding Corporation, or NGHP. On July 2nd, 2012, 2010, North General Hospital, one of DASNY's secured hospital borrowers in Harlem, filed for relief under the United States Bankruptcy Code. On June 22nd, 2011, the Bankruptcy Court issued an order confirming a plan of liquidation. In accordance with the plan, on June 30th, 2011, the North General Hospital main building, an annex and parking lot were conveyed to NGHP as the authorities designee and NGHP and the New York City Health and Hospitals Corporation entered into a lease agreement. Under that agreement, NGHP leased the main building to HHC, which was to be renovated by HHC for use as a long-term acute care hospital. On the same date, NGHP sold the parking lot to HHC for redevelopment as a skilled nursing facility, and NGHP sold the annex to the Institute for Family Health for use as a family practice center. In late December 2012, after the renovation of the annex was completed, the family practice center was opened for business. Pursuant to the plan of liquidation, a liquidation trustee appointed by the bankruptcy court liquidated all of the other assets of NGH and since June 30, 2011, has been settling and paying the remaining claims of creditors. A portion of the proceeds of the sale of properties noted above in the amount of $1,720,000 had been set aside in case it was needed to pay claims of creditors. However, the liquidation trustee determined these funds were not necessary for payment of claims. And on October 30th, 2013, they were used to redeem a portion <clears throat> of the DASNY secured hospital bonds issued for the benefit of North General Hospital. The liquidation trustee continues to resolve claims submitted by NGH, NGH unsecured creditors. DASNY's unsecured claims represent approximately half of the amount of the total unsecured claims with about 400 or other unsecured creditors claiming the other half. The liquidation trustee intends to make a distribution to the unsecured creditors which would likely result in a distribution to DASNY. Any distribution would be used after the payment of costs toward debt service on the outstanding DASNY bonds issued for the benefit of North General Hospital. Reconstruction and renovation work on the main hospital building was completed and it opened in November 2013. However, rental payments from HHC to NGHP are not due until HHC receives capital Medicaid reimbursement for the lease facility and no such reimbursement has been received to date. That's the end of the report. Gerard, thank you. Are there questions to Gerard on this report? Hearing none, is there any other business to come before this board? Hearing none, please to adjourn. Sandra, thank you. Is there a second? Thank you. All in favor, please indicate with aye. Uh, aye. Meeting the GHP stands adjourned. Uh, we will now open the meeting, the annual meeting for the Atlantic Avenue Healthcare Property Holding Corporation. <laughs> and the first order of business is the election of officers. That is a. Uh, sure, thank you. You've seen the, the list of officers. Uh, are there any questions?
hearing none, which is pleased to approve. Thank you. There's a second. Thank you very much, Sandra. All in favor, please indicate with aye. 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 Uh, the second order of business is the approval of minutes of the April 15, 2015. I'm sorry, that's, that's, it wasn't April 15. Was it April 15? Yeah. April 11. Oh, the, the minutes of the, yeah, the, the whole corporation were April 15. April 15. Thank you. And, and uh, my chief has a correction. Uh, again, similar to the last session, the date of March 2013 to December of 2013. Thank you very much. Uh, are there other questions for Mike on the minutes? Hearing none, may I have a motion please to approve it. Darrell, thank you. Is there a second? Second. Charlie, thank you very much. All in favor, please indicate with aye. 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 Uh, the motion carries. Uh, the third agenda item is a, is a proposed uh, amendment of the bylaws. And Mike Cusack will tell us that. Um, Mr. Chairman, in the interest of time, I'll try, I'll try to shorten it in, in, in the presentation and say that the, the minutes for the, uh, today's meeting will reflect the, the review of the mission statement, performance measures, and metrics with no changes recommended by, by the uh, uh, the governance committee uh, per our meeting today, and um, also that we are proposing the identical change to the subsidiary bylaws for Atlantic Avenue that's that was referenced in my earlier discussions to sections uh, 3.4 and 5.3 to allow for email notification to board members uh, reviewed by the governance committee and with the, and staff. Uh, these changes are recommended for the board's consideration. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mike. Uh, may I have a motion, please, to approve the uh, bylaw amendment? Thank you, Bill. Is there a second? Sandra, thank you. All in favor, please indicate with aye. 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 Motion carries unanimously. Uh, the fourth and final agenda item is the President's report. Thank you, Mr. Chair. We also hold an annual meeting of the Board of the Atlantic Avenue Healthcare Property Holding Corporation and update the board on any significant activities since the last annual meeting. Interfaith Medical Center, one of DASNY's secured hospital borrowers, located in Brooklyn, filed a petition under Chapter 11 of the Bankruptcy Code on December 2nd, 2012. On June 11, 2014, the Bankruptcy Court confirmed the Chapter 11 plan. The Chapter 11 plan provided for a restructured interfaith to operate a hospital at the premises subject to lease with Atlantic, transfer of title to interfaith's real property to Atlantic, the establishment of a liquidation trust to settle and pay unsecured creditors, the set aside of funds from which certain administrative and priority bankruptcy claims would be paid by a disbursement agent and the appointment of a temporary operator for new for the new restructure for the new IMC interfaith by the Department of Health. In accordance with the Chapter 11 plan on June 19, 2014, Atlantic took title to nearly all of IMC's real property, including the hospital property, and on the same day leased it to new IMC. Pursuant to the Department of Health statutory powers, a temporary operator was appointed. That appointment has now ended, and Interfaith's board was, has recently appointed Lorray Brown as president and CEO to fund the ongoing operations following its emergence from bankruptcy new IMC has been receiving regular operating assistance from the state in addition following DOH's approval of loan applications from new IMC DASNY has made loans to new IMC from the restructuring pool portions of which have been repaid to assist new IMC in meeting cash flow needs. New IMC is participating in the DISRIP preferred provider system led by Maimonides Medical Center. <coughs> new IMC was timely with its rent payments 
since Atlantic became the owner of the property until late last year, when its cash flow became very tight and its payments began to slip later into the month. New IMC is now one month <coughs> behind in its rent payments and has indicated an intention to come current next month. In February of this year, $3.6 million was transferred by Atlantic to be used toward the $8.1 million bond debt service payment then due, significantly reducing the payment that the state would have otherwise been required to make. In mid-February, due to the extreme cold, several pipes in the hospital burst and flooded the emergency department and other areas. Damages are estimated <coughs> to approximate $1 million. New IMC has repaired the underlying damages and the complete restoration is in progress. DASNY has been assisting New IMC in resolving its insurance claim. That concludes my report, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Gerard. Uh, are there questions for Gerard? Gerard uh, hearing none, is there any other business come for the board? Hearing none, may I have a motion to adjourn? Sandra, thank you. Charlie, thank, thank you very much for this. <coughs> All in favor, please indicate that I. Uh, meeting stands adjourned. I hope